Photoshop provides us with a number of amazing retouching tools that we can use to fix photographs, remove blemishes, a lot of different options that we have. And in this video, we're going to take a look at what's available to us. First thing we're going to take a look at is the healing tools. And I love these tools. They are just amazing. I don't know how they do what they do, but we're going to go through them one at a time. The first tool that we're going to look at is the spot healing brush tool. And I use this tool a lot, actually. It, it's very simple. You select it. You can choose the brush size and the hardness. Typically, I'll go with a very soft brush and maybe we'll boost the size up a little bit. And then let's say that we want to remove this little blemish here on the tomato. I can just simply paint over it and it's gone. Just really that simple. Same with, like, let's say we were cleaning up just these little dots, these little tiny blemishes on the different tomatoes here. You want to make sure that the area that you're painting in is large enough to remove the area. Essentially, the way they work is it averages the pixels that are around the area that you're painting. For instance, if we come over here to this tomato and remove this split, if I just paint this in like so, you notice that it's pretty much gone. It does a pretty good job. You can go back and retouch certain areas if you like, but very powerful. Another great type of image that these tools work extremely well on is with retouching old photos. and. Uh, I have a photo here. You can see it's in pretty rough shape if I zoom in here a little bit. Now, obviously, I can't sharpen the image, but you'll notice the cracks and even missing emulsion over here on the left. And these tools do a pretty amazing job at replacing that without a lot of effort. For instance, we have this scratch here. I can just simply paint over it, and it fills it in. Same with Say we uh, want to remove these scratches here on her dress. I think you'll agree that it does a pretty amazing job at figuring out what the area should be filled with once the scratch is removed. Now one thing that I will caution you on whenever you're using these tools is that you want to not cross over dark to light boundaries, I found. Like for instance, uh, right here, if I come down across his shoulder starting in the dark area, it can sometimes skew the end result. Okay, so in this particular case, I may want to just retouch the dark area and then retouch this area of his shoulder here and then down through his shirt. And the average end result is usually better. Okay, so you want to pay attention to that. And usually I actually work with a smaller brush most of the time, maybe around 19 or 20. But even with a small brush, you can use it for larger areas. Okay, and you'll see that we have a number of choices. One is proximity match, which basically looks at the image that's nearby. Uh, create texture is great if you're duplicating patterns. And then content aware, which is what we're using, is a newer feature with Photoshop and it reads all of the existing pixels in the general area and then replaces that region accordingly. Now there are a number of tools for healing certain areas here but even with this spot healing brush if we tackle a big area like this here for instance and just paint this all in just this section of the tear It actually does a pretty darn good job of filling it in, doesn't it? Come up here and do this section next. And it, it appears that it's averaging from this area. So we would probably need to use a different tool or fix some of the top section here first. And then come back and... Yeah, there you go. So I don't know about you, but I think that that's pretty acceptable. And so just with a fairly short amount of time, we can go through this picture 
and really restore it back to closer its original form just by using the spot healing brush now the healing brush tool essentially works the same way if we go with a slightly smaller version you'll notice that it does it on a grander scale and what I found is that the healing brush tool tends to actually average things a little bit more you'll notice that it doesn't maintain the level of detail so it definitely has a very specific application you know not necessarily for retouching per se but if you're working on removing blemishes and photographs or want to remove a cloud or something like that it may be a better option for you because in this case you'll notice where the spy healing brush tool was gave us choices of content aware and all of that the healing brush just pulls from sampled images and it also will replicate with patterns okay so it to me it limits its function a little bit the patch tool works very similarly but I find it kind of cool let's go over here to a tomato picture that we had and I'll show you how the patch tool works here you'll notice that we have this blemish here on the tomato it was actually in the tomato and let's say that we wanted to move that so what I would do is with the patch tool selected I would draw a line or a circle around the area that we want to replace and then you'll notice that whenever I move the tool into the selected area there's a little arrow that appears to the right and essentially what that does is if I left mouse click and drag to the right or to the left whatever you notice how it's sampling the image to the right whenever I release the mouse what it'll do is it'll take that as an example and average it together with the pixels that are in the existing source area and uh, use that to create a patch okay so watch what happens now if I deselect it did a pretty darn good job of removing that didn't it and then we could just use the spy healing brush to go in and clean up that tiny little line right here if that bothers us so I can just go in and actually I probably want to use a bigger brush but you can see now that you know that spot is gone and the average person would never know that it was there so it's an extremely powerful tool as well and then the red eye tool is pretty straightforward I'm not going to demonstrate that it just simply removes red eye from photographs that were shot with the flash and the process essentially works very similarly uh, the next tool we're going to look at in this video are the clone stamp tools and the clone stamp works very similar to some of the patch tools that we were just working with with one huge exception and that is that the clone stamp works with the source image in other words rather than use content aware fill like we were playing around with with the healing brushes you set a specific location where you're deriving your repair from so for instance if we wanted to remove this line right here let's increase the size of the brush a little bit and so I would either if I'm on a, a PC I would push the alt key to set a source on a Mac it's the option key and so I would click hold the alt key down and click and that sets my source and then when I come down and start painting you notice the crosshairs shows me exactly where it's deriving its source repair from so it's not averaged like the healing brush was it's a literal side-by-side -side cloning I mean you're cloning one area and going to another okay so in some cases that can actually work extremely well like for instance perhaps there's a certain area if you're retouching where the content aware tool just isn't working the way it's supposed to so you can use a clone tool and have full control over what you're cloning and where and one of the things that I like about it I don't know if you can see it but notice how whenever I move the brush you can actually see where the clone what is going to be applied see if I move it up here you can see exactly what's going to be applied it's going to be that grass area and then like before the crosshairs will show me where it's deriving its 
its source from. So in some cases, if you're cloning a larger area, you may have to reset your point multiple times to fill in and simply choose the Alt key and, and click and that'll reset your source area. Okay. So again, another powerful resource for working in these tools. And one other uh, tool that I forgot to mention here was the Content Aware Move tool. This is a newer tool in Photoshop, but essentially it works the same way, except on a much larger scale. Like for instance, let's say that we wanted to move this deer <laughs> to the right or maybe down into the scene a little bit more. You can simply, with the Content Aware Move, I can silhouette around the deer and it doesn't have to be perfect. But just silhouette around the deer here. Okay, and if I move him to the right, you notice that his butt is still there. Let's move him down a little bit too. But watch what happens whenever I release the selection. He vanishes. Now, it's not always perfect. You'll notice that there's some blurring and all of that. But the good news is that you can then go in and use some of the other healing tools or the patch tool. Actually, in this case, a patch tool might work really well. So I can just come in, select that area, and pull in a patch from right next door. And you notice that it repairs it pretty well. It works very similar to a clone. You notice that there's duplication there. But still, across the board, it's a very, very powerful tool. You'll notice that up here around his head, there's really no repair necessary that we have to do. And along with that, the content aware tools are probably the most powerful. And there is a content aware tool that actually isn't in this toolbar, but is actually a content aware fill. And so if I select, say, this area, let's say that I don't want this dark spot here, okay? So I'm gonna draw a selection using the marquee tool that we looked at earlier. I'm going to feather that edge just a little bit, just so that it's not such a harsh edge. We'll choose five. And then I'm gonna come up to Edit, Fill, and choose Content Aware. Very often, and matter of fact, earlier we were looking at foreground color, but in this case, we're gonna choose Content Aware, and there's nothing else to do other than click OK. And you notice what happens. That dark spot is gone. So the Content Aware Fill averaged what was going on in the area and filled that selection <laughs> with that average. And it looks awesome, doesn't it? it? It really looks pretty amazing. And you would never know that that dark spot was there. So these are very, very powerful tools that you can use in a variety of fashions to create and edit and retouch your photographs in some pretty cool ways.